Welcome back to SAP Special Stocks. I'm your instructor, Matthew Hunt. And we're now going to get into our first special stock, and it's consignment. And I want to start because this is the first video that we're doing where you're actually going to see um, some demos and, and stuff like that. I, I want to start off by showing you the basic layout that I have for all my slides. When I start a section, I first show this slide, and I will always put the title of, of the section. So this particular section, we're dealing with consignment. And below that, I will, I will tell you the specific tasks that we're going to go over in this section. So for instance, in consignment, I'm going to give you an overview of consignment, tell you what it is, the use case for it. Then I'll get into the consignment process map. So we'll actually walk through the, the business process that the consignment uh, special stock emulates. Then we'll, we'll uh, get into the master data as well as the purchasing documents with consignment, inventory management with consignment, and then finally the consignment settlement, uh, which is really the, the financial piece creating the um, invoicing documents and that kind of stuff. I also always show the SAP menu paths that we're going to be doing most of these transactions in. So if you're first starting out in SAP, you, you probably learn where the transactions are by going through the SAP menu tree. And so if that's the case, most of the purchasing transactions that we're using are under the Logistics Materials Management Purchasing folder. And the inventory transactions we'll be using are under the Logistics Materials Management Inventory Management folder. If you just like using the, the transaction codes, typing them in the transaction box because it's, it's way faster, um, I also provide the transaction codes for you. So we'll be changing the material master settings. So we'll be using MMO2, creating a purchasing info record, which is ME11, create purchase orders, which is ME21N. We'll also, I, I don't know if I'll get into it, but I'll, sh I'll show or I'll tell you that you can also use schedule agreements. So you can use um, multiple types of purchasing documents, a purchase order or a schedule agreement. Schedule agreement is ME31L. To do the inventory postings, we will always use MyGo. Um, you could use an inbound delivery if you wanted to, for example, to do the goods receipt. Um, but I'm going to just use the MyGo transaction. MRKO is the consignment settlement job that I, I told you about. Um, that creates the invoicing and financial documents. And then MB54 is a consignment stock report. Um, there's other stock reports you can use. MMBE, um, MB52 also shows your, your consignment and unrestricted stocks. So. The next slide that I always show is in the consignment overview is the use case slide. So what it is that, that uh, we're, we're learning about and how it's used. So we're talking about consignment here. The use case is in consignment, the vendor provides materials to the customer. The customer stores them in their location. And as I've pointed out down here in the, the first bullet, the vendor remains the legal owner of the material until the customer withdraws the materials. So just to recap that, the materials are actually sitting in the customer's location, but the customer is not the legal owner of the product. There, When you do a goods receipt, you'll see there's not actually a financial document done at the time of goods receipt. Only when the withdrawal takes place are the financial documents in SAP actually created. Invoice verification can be a part of the consignment process. Um, as is a requirement in some countries. So some countries you can't do ERS and so you have to have a paper invoice. That process can be done in consignment or you can also do the consignment settlement transaction, the MRKO transaction that I said, in which case the consignment invoice is automatically generated. All the billing documentation is, is automatically generated. The vendor can require the customer to take ownership of the remaining consignment materials after a certain period of time. Withdrawal then has to take place after that period of time. This is commonly referred to in the procurement uh, world as a sunset clause. So if you go to your supplier and you ask them to sign a 
consignment contract, typically one of the clauses they're going to want to have in the contract is what's called a sunset clause, which means after X number of days in your consignment store, those parts you have to buy. So you have to take them out of the consignment store. You have to withdraw them. That's just for the, or for the supplier's sake so that you don't order a bunch of parts uh, that you don't really need and, and just keep them um, in in your your location. Getting into some of the features the consignment SAP consignment has, the consignment stock has the same material number as your own stock. Therefore, it can be transferred to available stock. What that means in a nutshell, you don't have to have one part number for consignment and another part number for um, own stock. You, it's the same part number uh, throughout the process. You can define consignment prices in foreign currency. So if, for example, your supplier you know, wants to be paid in um, pesos um, and your, your local um, plant, uh, the standard price is U.S. dollars, you could create a, an info record and a, and a consignment PO in pesos and pay your supplier in pesos. You can determine period-specific consignment prices if time phase conditions are configured in your system. So I'm not going to really focus in on condition records, um, but if you're familiar with condition records, um, you know that you can have multiple validity periods. So you can set a, a valid from and a valid to period, and you can have a price for that validity period. And you can have multiple validity periods, assuming they don't overlap. You can specify consignment prices in any unit of measure as long as a conversion factor is maintained in the info record. So for example, if my stock keeping unit a measure is kilograms, but my um, supplier requires me to order the product in pounds, um, I, can, I can buy it in pounds as long as I've maintained a conversion factor between kilograms and pounds in the info record. Other features, um, using consignment info records, you can make use of all the condition, func condition functions used in purchasing, for instance, discounts or price scales. So price scales being um, you can have a different price um, as you buy more and more. Um, so if you, know, if you, you buy 100, it's one price. You buy 1,000, it's a, it's a lesser price type thing. Consignment stocks of the same material from different vendors can be managed independently from one another at the price of the individual vendor. So, for example, if you're using a quota arrangement and you're buying um, the same material from multiple vendors, um, you, can, you can actually have two different prices and you can manage the inventory by vendor. So your, um, your consignment inventory for vendor A is separate from your consignment inventory from vendor B, even if it's the same material number. Consignment stocks are not evaluated at the time of goods receipts. Only when the material is withdrawn is it evaluated at the price in the info record. That's important. I want to call that out because probably the one question that I get more than any when I, I teach this course is um, students ask me, why isn't the price in the purchase order? And the reason is the purchase order is tied to the goods receipt. Once the goods receipt is done, the purchase order is really closed. And you can create multiple um, consignment purchase orders and goods receipt them. That doesn't necessarily mean that you have withdrawn the stock and, and taken ownership of it. So when you actually withdraw the stock, that is when the part is evaluated, which is after the purchase order is typically closed. And that's why the price is on the info record and not the purchasing document. Last point, consignment material can be allocated to one of three stock types. One, unrestricted use. Two, quality inspection. Three, blocked. You can make transfer postings between these different stock types. However, withdrawals from the consignment store can only be posted from unrestricted stock. So what that means is if you've got stock in any one of these other to quality inspection or blocked, you first have to do a transfer posting from quality inspection or blocked into unrestricted use, and then you can do the withdrawal of the material out of unrestricted. Now I'm going to show you the typical process 
flow of a consignment process from end to end. So it typically starts with the customer, assuming you're running MRP um, to generate purchase requisitions, you'd convert that into a purchase order or a schedule agreement. That would then generate some type of EDI document to the vendor, um, which the vendor then would create a sales order, which would drive demand in their MRP system, which would drive the production. Assuming they're using a make-to-stock inventory model, then that production, once it's produced, would, would move into um, a general stock, unrestricted stock category. When it's time for them to ship your order based on the delivery date you provided in the purchasing document, they will goods issue that stock. If you're using ASNs, um, this would be the point that the supplier would send you an ASN. ASN stands for Advanced Ship Notice. That ASN would create an inbound delivery on the customer side. Um, if you're not using inbound deliveries, you could still post a goods receipt against the purchasing document. When you post the goods receipt in the per against the purchasing document, it's going to post the stock into the consignment store or the consignment stock locations. One of those three stock locations that I, I just mentioned, unrestricted use, quality inspection, or block stock. Typically, um, a proof of delivery um, is, is after you've done the goods receipts and a proof of delivery to the vendor. The vendor is then monitoring those. When they receive the goods receipt notice, that's how they know how to move the stock from a in-transit stock category into a consignment stock store, or in SAP terminology, it's called material at customer location. That process then kind of ends, and the on the customer side, then you're running MRP, you're creating production orders. Um, when you goods receipt your production order or you back flush um, a planned order if you're doing repetitive manufacturing, that goods receipt then will uh, withdraw the stock that it needs to build that production order or that planned order and it'll withdraw the stock from the consignment store. Okay. If you have a sunset clause and the sunset clause has expired, you can also do a manual transfer posting and I'll, I'll show that to you when, when we get into the demos. But when the consignment is withdrawn, an EDI message is sent to the supplier. The supplier is then monitoring those withdrawal message. And that is when they goods issue the stock from the consignment storage location into a, a consumption bucket. So, so they've posted goods issue and, and it's, it's been shipped, which also triggers then billing documentation. Um, which at that point, when you do the goods receipt and the consignment withdrawal, you will run the MRKO consignment settlement um, job, which that's where the ERS document comes into play. Also, it's, it's somewhat typical for you to provide your supplier with a consignment stock report, which just is for the supplier to do any type of reconciliation on their side. So they know how much inventory is still in consignment and the, the transfer postings in and out of the consignment store location. So I've thrown a lot at you. I want to pause. I'll, I'm going to stop this video, give you a time to catch up on your notes. There are, there are quizzes at the end of every section, so hopefully you're taking good notes. And when we come back in the next video, we'll actually get into some of the SAP screens, and I'll show you some of the demos. So when you are ready to continue, please go to the next video.